Hello everyone, today we have another video about Architect ALP for you. We will discuss programming of PR as slave and connecting the SME 200 operator panel as master. It's particularly relevant for use with PR models that lack a built-in display. These include PR100, PR102 and the upcoming PR103. For our example, let's use PR100 as it is the most popular model. Let's define our task. Suppose we have an actuator connected to the discrete output of the PR and I want to turn it on and off using two buttons connected to the inputs of the same PR as well as using elements on the operator panel screen. To do this, we need to create two projects, one for the PR, another for the SME 200, and connect them via the RS-485 interface. So let's get started. We will start with the PR project. If we only had physical control, the program would look something like this. We would need an RS or SR trigger, depending on which has priority in this task between turning on and off. And we would connect the output of this SR or RS trigger to the output of the PR. Since we need to duplicate this control using the operator panel, we will need to make the PR a slave device. Let's find out how to do it. Go to the device settings, configure the RS485 interface as a slave, specify the slot number, operating mode, and other network settings. I will leave them as default, specify the network address to the PR, since we won't be transmitting data of type real, we won't touch the change register order and change byte order checkboxes. And since PR is a slave device, they won't affect anything. Add two integer variables, even though the commands we will be transmitting are boolean, meaning they will either be 0 or 1. This is because the PR, as a slave device, can only work with real or integer network variables. Let's name the first variable stored in register 512 SME on, meaning the command from the operator panel to turn on. The second one, SME off, meaning the command to turn off will be in register 513. Let's modify our program a bit. The command for turning on and off will not come only from the physical inputs of the PR, but also from the network variables. But note that although our network variable is integer, the command we will use will be of boolean type. That means we convert it to an integer on the SME 200 to transmit over the network. And on the PR, we convert it back from an integer into a boolean and connect it to the input of the OR block. We will do the same with the OFF command. Now the project for the PR is ready. Let's upload it to the device and move on to setting up the SME 200. Note that in the SME 200 program editor, there are no input and output contacts. This is because the operator panel does not have its own inputs and outputs, just a program and screen. Let's start with the interface setting, the only one available in SME 200. We will switch the interface to master mode. The protocol, speed and other settings remain unchanged. They default to those used by the PR. Add the device being pulled, the address will be 16. We don't touch the change register order, 
and change byte order checkboxes since we are transmitting integers. Add two variables for network exchange. The first we will name on. This integer variable lies in PR register 512. We don't read this variable, we only write. And writing will be performed upon the change of the variable's value. Similarly, we name the second variable off. Its value will be integer, lying in register 513. No read function, only write, and writing also on change. We will also need two intermediate variables. Let's call them screen on. The variable we will set from the screen, which will be a boolean parameter, and the screen off variable, also boolean. We will convert these boolean variables with a conversion block into integers, and we write the conversion result into the network variables. Since the values of the intermediate variables are not set anywhere yet, Architect ALP shows us an error. But as soon as we create input-output blocks of boolean parameters on the screen and bind the corresponding variables there, this error will disappear. Let's edit the input-output elements. Set the text for true as 1, for false as 0. For entering the on command, set the text before as on and leave a space. Leave this element editable, meaning it can be set from the screen. Thus, with an on command, we will see the text on 1, and with no on command, on 0. Similarly, we will set up the input-output element for the off command. Here, I will point out one feature. When you change the value of a bool parameter on the SME200 or PR200 screen, you're essentially setting a new value and fixing this parameter to a new value. That means the operator came, gave the on command, and it kind of sticks. And to remove this command, the operator needs to edit this parameter again. Accordingly, to turn off this command. This is not always convenient because the operator can simply forget to turn off some of the commands and it will be constantly sent. Therefore, we will write a small program. The command that the operator enters from the screen for turning on, we will connect the RS trigger block. And as soon as the RS trigger block is started, it should continue to turn on this very same variable, meaning the variable is turned on itself. But besides this, the RS trigger block will also start a T on timer, called a delay on timer. And I will set a delay of 3 seconds. As soon as this timer counts down, the delay and turns on its output, the RS trigger block should reset. I connect the timer's output to the R contact of the RS trigger. Since the RS trigger has a priority on turning off, the command from this timer turns out to be more critical than the command received from the screen. That is, from the screen on variable and the RS trigger blocks turns off and also turns off the screen on variable. That's how we have essentially obtained a variable without a disconnection after 3 seconds. Now the operator doesn't need to think about whether he forgot to turn off the submitted command or not. And similarly, 
we will add an algorithm for the screen of variable. Note that LP warns us that reverse or cyclic links have been detected. In our case, reverse feedback from the timer to the RS trigger. There's nothing scary about this. It's possible and necessary to work with reverse links. They just warn us to be a bit more careful with them. Now we will write this project into SME 200 and let's check how it all works. I have uploaded all the projects, connected SME 200 with PR with the RS485 interface. I also connected the PR to the computer and started the online debugging mode. So somewhere at the top, you will see the current state of variables on PR. Let's see how the buttons work. The on button turns on the light. The off button turns the light off. Now let's check the control from the operator panel. We press the cell button, select variable for turning on, change its state to 1, meaning we submit the command and press OK. As you see, the command to turn on was successfully sent to the PR. The light turned on and the variable on SME 200 reset itself after 3 seconds, thanks to our algorithm with the RS trigger and timer. Now let's try to submit the command to turn off from the operator's panel. As you see, it also worked. And let's try to combine this control. We will turn on the light with the button connected to PR and we will turn it off using the operator panel. Well, and as you see, this also works. I hope you agree with me that using PR with SME 200 is very easy. The only thing I would like to note is that the method used in this video for transmitting boolean values over the network is not very good. Converting one boolean value into one integer occupies too much network memory of PR. It is much better in this respect is the use of so-called masks when several logical values are packed into one integer. And of course, we will learn that in future videos. That's all for now. Subscribe to our channel so as not to miss new videos and don't forget about likes. Until next time.